All right, so we're gonna go ahead and kick this thing off like two minutes early. If somebody walks in late, don't awkwardly stare at them. Or do, I'm not your dad. Um, so, hello and welcome to How to Live Stream 101. Um, we're gonna go down the row here and have everybody introduce themselves. Uh, but first, I wanna kinda check out there, how many of you guys are streamers currently? Cool, 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 cool. Uh, how many of you guys are aspiring streamers? Great, awesome. <laughs> and how many of you guys are just really enthusiastic chat? All right, Aww. great, great, awesome. You guys, I both love and hate you people who just raised your hands. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hello and welcome. My name is Noah Downs. I'm an attorney. I'm not your attorney. Anything I say today is for informational purposes only, and your situation will almost always be different. Now that I've gotten my official legal disclaimer out of the way, um, I represent all of these people. And they're wonderful people and they're really good at what they do. So hopefully you walk away from today knowing a little bit about, you know, how to live stream 101. Um, we will have some time at the end for a little bit of a Q&A. Um, and so just kind of hold your questions to the end. We will say, though, for your Q&A, just remember, stay away from like context. Uh, I just want to know what your question is. So um, don't need all that stuff because it's important to get the information. So we're going to start at the far end. Doing this to me again, huh? Yeah. My name is uh, Jared. I go by the 8-Bit Drummer on uh, Twitch and YouTube, and uh, I play drums for your enjoyment. Woo! Yeah. Hello. My name is uh, Anthony Labrizzi. I go by Labrizzi. It's very easy to remember. Um, I'm a variety caster, uh, which is the scariest thing to say nowadays when it comes to <laughs> broadcasting, but it's very rewarding, and I hope I can share some insight with you guys today. Hi, I'm Stephanie. On Twitch, I'm also Stephanie, and I perform music. Uh, hi, my name's Ryan. Uh, I go by McLaffy Taffy on Twitch. Uh, I'd like to say I'm a variety broadcaster, but people only watch me play The Binding of Isaac. So <laughs> if I'm being like real hard, look in the mirror kind of thing, I play The Binding of Isaac, and people show up, and then I play other things, and then they leave. So that's... That's that's the truth of it. But he's like really good at Binding of Isaac. But I'm so. really good at the Binding of Isaac. So, and uh, I stream next year. So, um, anyways, so I want to kick this off with kind of the basic. Uh, you know, that's up to you. God willing, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> You're my Noah friend. Downs, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though. Uh, so, uh, kind of want to kick it off. Very basic kind of things. How did y'all start streaming? Like, uh, what what kind of caused you to take that leap, so to speak? Anybody can take it. Okay. Uh, well, um, goodness me. I, I started streaming back about three and a half years ago. Um, actually, I know it to the date, May 31st, 2015. Uh, I started just playing drums on the internet. Uh, I wanted to make music. I've been watch I was watching people, um, you know, on YouTube do like the uh, video game cover thing, and kind of wanted to do that myself. The main reason why I started was I just needed to get myself out of a situ, well, a mindset and a situation that I was in. Um, just got out of a really iffy relationship, uh, and I just I needed something to do with my time, you know, just to get my mind off of it. So I bought Pro Tools. I bought a uh, a mixer, and Pro Tools never worked. The mixer did though. So I ended up just, uh, I was watching Twitch at a friend's house and he was like, hey, uh, I, I watch this. And I'm like, I didn't know this was a thing. Like I had no idea what Justin TV was or Twitch was. I only knew YouTube at that point in time. And I started streaming. First stream had no sound, which was kind of detrimental to being a drum streamer. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> closed captioning. Um, but then, um, like three and a half years later, here I am talking to you guys about um, just, you know, wanting to have fun and do this type of thing. So I'm really glad that I was able to do it. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been content creating for about seven and a half years now. I started on YouTube, uh, which definitely helps a lot, by the way. If you want a quick one-on-one -on -one right out the gate, also having a YouTube channel does help. Just, you know, broadening your horizon. But uh, I started on YouTube, and I remember someone just left me a comment, and they were like, "You should stream." I was like, "All right." And so I just tried it. <laughs> I just, you know, picked up some gear and turned on the stream, and uh, I never looked back. You know, um, I've been on Twitch now for well over five years, and I, I love it. And I, I kind of abandoned the YouTube, but you know, 
with the adpocalypse and everything, it doesn't seem like a bad thing. But still, you should have a YouTube channel. It is important. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> he's really good at streaming. I made the switch to Twitch, and I I adore it. And it's because that guy was like, "You should try this," and I was like, "Okay, that's, that's pretty neat." And then I did it. I had tried YouTube before, um, but it was it was too much effort to do something that wasn't very social to try to get something that seemed perfect that I would put on YouTube and then nobody would come see it. And that wasn't gratifying. Uh, I was a busy mom and I came on when Creative was launched in 2016 and I was a viewer first and I just thought it was really cool and the way that people just brought who they were and did what they loved, I thought, well, music's creative too. I'd love to try to play music again. It had been about 10 years and so I just picked up my guitar and started playing again and people showed up and even though I kind of sucked, you know, people were really, really nice and encouraging. And uh, yeah, now three years later, like music is a huge part of my life. And there are still people that show up, even though sometimes I do suck. And it's still a lot of fun. And I, I couldn't have, I don't think that any other kind of content creation would work for me the way that live streaming does. Um, I started YouTube content creation with a friend back in 2010. Um, it's been a long ass time. And I was doing it uh, as, as an escape, like I was uh, an impoverished, shitty actor. Uh, the the economic crisis of 2008 had just happened, so I was happy to even have a table waiting job. Uh, but that didn't leave a whole lot of room for a creative outlet. And then discovered the the whole YouTube scene of like Hutch and Scene Hunters and Respawn. Um, saw some stuff that was going on after a little while once those guys kind of stopped making content and i didn't like what they were making so my friend and i started making what we thought was better uh they made us respawn directors um it, it's been my 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 road's been weird uh but it ended up in twitch eventually uh because i like the the community cultivation aspect of it and so that's what i've been working on as so i joke about playing the binding of isaac but i'm the, the curator of a batshit crazy group of viewers and that's that's what i do and games happen in the background of that um and i've been doing that i've been partnered for going on four years in march um so yeah thank you that's uh yeah that's a northern lion led me that direction where i was just like oh one of my youtubers does twitch and i looked at it and i was like oh this is great i want to do this instead and that's that's where it's been ever since so so that's kind of a good segue into um one of my later questions but you kind of tossed it up right there um twitch is really about building a community because it's not so much you know when you, when you go to a movie you see tom cruise up there and he's all dashing and striking and you forget about all his moral faults and but you can't actually <laughs> talk to him um however when you're sitting there and you're broadcasting i <laughs> got jared on that one uh, uh, when you're saying that you're actually broadcasting, you were you were able to talk to your chat and they like they're part of your stream, they're part of the reason you're there. So, um, what is it like to build a community and how do you kind of maintain that community? Anybody? It's a uh, it's absolutely fantastic being able to share what you love doing with others, and uh, I think that's that that goes for anybody at any age because you're always like, hey, yo, come check this out. You know what I'm saying? But whenever it comes to live streaming and building a community. There, there's like, there's that weird disconnect that there needs to be between the fact that like, uh, you are you are the streamer while people are really enjoying your content. They are, it's like, I don't really want to get into the whole like friendship over the internet argument or whatever, but uh, <laughs> so I won't go that way. But I will say that uh, community building is so much fun because you get to meet so many people with so many different ideas and uh, uh, like thought processes and stuff like that. A really big tool that we've been using um, with our stream is Discord. I'm sure that almost everybody in here knows exactly who what in here is. is on Discord. Yeah. All right. If you're not, if your hand's not raised, get on it. <laughs> Discord.gg slash the drummer. But um, like, it's it's super fun being able to just interact with all these people from all around the world. Um, it started it started really small as everything does, and uh, more and more people come in. Uh, I've made tons of friends. Um, some of my some of my mods are some of my best friends that I've had and I've, that I've been able to make. And um, speaking of that, one of my mods is actually my wife, who I was able to meet through live streaming. So uh, I love you very much. 
And I'm just, I'm so glad that like uh, we're able to share the experiences that we have with other people. And that's what Twitch is all about. I sort of want to touch on too that there is your community within your channel, but then depending on what you stream, there's also this other overarching community. Like for instance, uh, we're in the music community and you know, it's sort of still a growing thing on Twitch and going and seeing other people's streams and hosting and getting to know them. Um, and we have a Discord server for Twitch musicians and that became, the music community became a, a thing. We started doing charity all together. We started collaborating. So that real community focus on Twitch is something that I haven't seen really on other platforms. And it's important to be a part of the community outside of your own community. Like I feel like it's not benefit, it wouldn't be beneficial for me to just be an island. You know, I wanna be a community resource and, and help other people and learn from other people as well. So that's just something I kinda wanna touch on with community. Yeah, it's a great point too, cause uh, like Taffy and I, we, our communities kind of melded together after a while and it's been beneficial for both of us, right? Like, yep. uh, it's a, I don't know, it's a, it's a great thing, you know, getting yourself out there, making friends, not just with the people who come to you, but you know, you can come to other people and just see where it goes. He didn't want to get into it, but I will a little bit, though. With, uh, <laughs> no, 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 because no, I, th I think it is important. That fine line. Uh, the f the fine, no, yeah, because there is a fine line. Um, also, I won't plug my Discord because you have to be subscribed to uh, join it. So. Hey. Uh, hey. You don't have to be sub to mine, though. Or subscribe. Uh, but there, where do I even begin with this? Uh, I've met my girlfriend through my community. Hello. Hi. Um, I've met friends that, you know, we, we ended up meeting in real life, people I plan on inviting to my wedding, people that I want to be a part of my life, you know, forever. Um, but there's, there's only so much, you know, if you, if you grow to a point, you, you can't, people can't expect it from you at the same time that you can be there for them all the time. Um, cause you are the content creator and they are consuming your content. And it's a great thing if you meet friends. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying that for me, uh, at least, there came to a point where everyone was confiding everything to me. A lot of people were just like hitting me up and I want to help them all, but there's only so much time in the day. It became completely overwhelming. And you uh, only have so much emotional bandwidth for all that. Yeah, too. yeah, it's a lot. So I feel like it's kind of just like, it's on you to, um, set that boundary set what kind of boundary you want with everybody uh and stick to it you know don't fold for them stick to you and what you're comfortable with um because it'll it'll overwhelm you you know um but it, it is a, it is a beautiful thing you know everyone is on twitch for something different so i'm not telling you something specific that you have to do that but there's only so much it's okay to set do. those boundaries and it's okay to be upfront with people some people don't understand that and you do have mm. to tell them and you don't have to be rude about it but you can be kind and say I, you know i honestly just have a lot going on i won't be able to respond to your messages yeah. or if i do i can respond to your messages once a week you know or, or something like that it's there there it's okay to set boundaries yeah. and everyone will take that differently you know if if they truly respect you then they will respect your boundaries you know um, but yeah that's that's a great point Devin, um done? I don't know, man. Like, I, yeah, it, it really like the emotional bandwidth comment was was super like that hit home. Where I think um, I literally lifted that from you. I like I so I I had a year where I wasn't streaming. I, like it, it is a it is a weird road. I started off streaming and things were going hot because I came up with a good YouTube channel and I kind of imported my audience. So when people say like, "What was it like when your audience? You know, you were just starting out?" and it's weird because I hijacked an audience and brought it in. Um, and then I left for a year because my, my wife was battling cancer, but I, like when I came, when she beat it and we came back, she convinced me to come back and a business partner I had convinced me to come back and a fan, I hadn't streamed in 12 months and had no intention of coming back and a fan hit me at TwitchCon and I thought she was trying to get to like really important people who were behind me. And so I danced around her. I was like, ma'am, I can't get out of your way. And then she hugged me and was like, I really miss your stuff and I, you know, hope things are going well. So I came back and found 60 people still subbed after wow. a year. 
and they were just like this is the only way we knew how to help like we followed the facebook posts and we didn't know what else to do so this is what we did so it's been as much a challenge for me the other direction forcing myself to draw the lines because the core nugget of people that have been there are like family to me even though i've not met most of them and then we just add to that group like when brizzy and my groups kind of melded i just got that many more people in and there just reaches a point where yeah you almost feel like a you know not to be weird about it but you almost feel like a youth pastor sometimes like it's just like you have like this like little weird <laughs> online church of people yeah. that are coming in <laughs> the church you're, of you're, taffy I mean, like you're, but you're just you're the guy behind the pulpit who's like hey everybody i hope you're having a wonderful day and if you got problems i'd be more than happy to talk to you but then eventually just the time runs out and so, like, if you're it, hopefully, if you're all doing well and things are continuing to grow, then you hit this like this sort of limit of the, the turnstile is only so big, um, and then you you hit places where people start having like legitimate problems, and you got to tell them really quickly. Just be like, I, I tell people, I'm a balding, pudgy, middle-aged guy who plays a children's game for money. Please find actual help yeah. that will help you. <laughs> yeah. like, I, I need I need you to have this in context of like you have a legitimate problem, and I I, I acknowledge that, and you got to take that to someone who can help you because I'm not it. I'm a wreck. Like yeah, day in and day out. My shit there might be awful. some legal repercussions right. too. <laughs> I mean, sure, yeah, that's probably important, but yeah. It's literally my job. Yeah, you, you start to hit a point where, like, hopefully if you're all having prosperity and the stream is growing, that eventually you, you're supposed to hit a point where you're outnumbered and, mm -hmm. and hopefully considerably so. And like, that's the thing. Like, don't let it, don't, don't take that in, like, a way that you have to be scared of that whole thing. Like, don't take the friendship comment, like, the, the, the fine line comment with anything other than being comical because the community aspect of Twitch is what makes twitch twitch yeah. it's the mm -hmm. most beautiful thing and you can like you can curate these communities like somebody uh, someone who i like to use in a uh in an example is moon 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 ow yeah. his discord is the craziest place i think i've ever seen but they all love him they all absolutely love moon moon they crap on him on stream all the time it's hilarious i watch moon moon a lot and <laughs> the thing is is that they don't let anybody else crap on Moon Moon. They can He's because like it's there. It's it, like it's his community. You know what I'm saying? But it, it's just it's so cool because like there are so many streamers that have these massive, massive communities that they're rallying for you. Your community is there for you to watch you play and to support you. So just, you know, it's enjoy it. Enjoy it while, while it's there. So speaking of enjoying it while it's there, um, what did you guys, what convinced you to take that step into going into streaming full time? Um, because I know each of you does something very, very different in your stream. Um, and maybe this is a good one to toss over to, to Stephanie because she's got, you know, she had one of the weirdest transitions of all into streaming from her former career. Yeah, it was odd. Um, so I was in the army. I was a military broadcaster, military photographer, deployed, came back. Um, Oh, thank you. Thank you for your taxpayer money that I appreciate that. I salute you. My GI bill. Thank you. My benefits. Thank you. Um, it was good. Ex it, it was, it was good training. I had, the, I had the background in broadcasting. I like to talk to people. I knew about computers. I knew about cameras. Um, I had worked for the government. It was horrible. I was doing that DC commute. Um, then after that, uh, was trying to freelance, uh, freelance photography business, had two kids and, um, Twitch just started out as fun and I still don't stream very often, but it's that perfect for me, like part-time supplemental income. Um, but, but I had the background. It was a strange transition. It was odd to get used to doing music. Like people would want to listen to that. You know what I mean? Like people would want to be there for that, but it was a, it was a strange transition, but the, to take the step to like go fully into it was my numbers were already there. There was already people there, you know, it was already going well. I was lucky. I feel, I feel fortunate that it was already going there. I didn't try to force it. I didn't have expectations. I did it because I, I actually had a lot of stuff emotionally that I needed to deal with. And this Twitch helped me with my social anxiety. It helped me with my depression and anxiety that constantly putting myself out there to the unknown in the, in the moment streaming and having that reinforcement, um, that exposure over time did me a lot of good playing music felt good it didn't matter if i sounded good or not it felt good um and it got to the point where it was like okay well this is taking over my camera is sitting on the shelf now 
Um, so it was a natural, gradual transition to now I just like pinch myself that I get to do this, that I get to put my kids to preschool doing this, you know, that I get to do this. Um, but it's not something I would have forced or pursued had it not just gone that way. And I think that it, I feel like I'm very fortunate that it did. Uh, if I could take over with the uh, natural, I hammerheaded it. I was like, I, th I'm, I'm making this happen. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I knew I loved it, and uh, I was doing that, and I was bartending at the time, and I was still in college. Um, and one day, I don't know, a calculated risk. I guess you can't really calculate something like that because Stephanie said it. It's a, uh, it's th there's a mix of luck. You know, there really is. And uh, I remember <laughs> I was living with my dad still. And I was like, hey, dad, uh, I'm going to drop out and uh, I'm going to pursue this. And he said, get out of my house. No, he <laughs> it, it was it was it was a very long uh, talk. Uh, and I owe him everything because somehow he was like, if you truly believe you can you can do it, then I'll give you a year. Show me you can do it. Um and uh, <laughs> I'll never be able to thank him enough for that, but I, that's what I did, you know? Um, now, it's, it's way harder to tell you to do something like that, especially nowadays. It's, it's so much more. Like, I, I made that step maybe like five and a half years ago. Uh, the market's so much more saturated now, and it's really hard to tell you, like, yeah, buy a $2,000 computer and... Uh, that had like a microphone and just live your dreams because it, it, it doesn't just happen. Um, you really need to do it with just natural intentions, you know, do it for you, do it for fun, do it recreationally, see where it goes. You might get lucky if you want to try to make that push. You know, it has to be a calculated risk. You, you have to come first, you know, not your stream. You, you have to come first. Um, but I just went for it and got pretty lucky and made friends. And I don't know. I'm not saying nepotism wins, but, you know, <laughs> making friends, it does help a lot. It's 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 a it's a big step, especially nowadays. It's I can't I won't say it's impossible because it's not. You might be very unique. You might have a great idea. Um, but don't be ashamed to look for help, you know, anywhere. Um, I was too stubborn to do something like that. And I made the journey way harder for myself. You just need to accept that it's, it's okay to ask for people for help, you know, just do it naturally. Uh, make friends. You know? yeah. I owe Taffy a bunch. He doesn't, he doesn't realize how much we've both benefited from one another and it's, and it's mutual and it's great. And we're not taking away from each other at all. Um, and again, it's luck, you know? Uh, he knows what dead pine is that where we met through Ian oh Ian yeah Ian said are you digging the culling and I said yeah the culling's pretty sweet and he's like I know this culling guy that I've been watching and he brought me in and so Ian is a friend of ours that is uh, doing it right he is a 10 million sub YouTube channel and uh, yeah he, he lives in a different world than us yeah and he said here go he, here check this out I got this guy that I found that's really good at the culling and I went in, he goes, watch this. And then he dropped like $150 tips. And he was like, ah, I like doing that to him. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just peaced out. Cause like, that's the world that Ian lives in. <laughs> and I was like, I made him happy. And he was just like, ah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shake this guy's cage and then leave. And he's like, you make friends. And like, I was like, wow. oh yeah, this is really cool. And then I, I lurked in Anthony's chat for a, a while. Cause I was, I was back from Amber's illness and I just didn't, I had known everybody that was in that area when I was there that size years earlier, but after I'd left, everyone there had gone up. Like Bear Taffy had gone up and Northern Line had gone up and um, all the other people around me had gone up. And so I was here with the whole new group of hungry, about to like grasp full time or already just had grasped full time people. And I was like, well, I'm going to meet the neighbors. And, I hung out in his channel forever before I even spoke because I didn't want to show up and be like, hey, I also stream. Yeah. Check out my wicked Fortnite vids. Don't do that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, but I was just, Ian, Ian dropped us in. I was just like, yeah, this is great. I'm going to hang out here after streams are over and have been for years now. I got, um, I got started with the, the whole streaming thing while I was working IT. Um, I was doing like house calls for computers and stuff. I ran a small business in, uh, 
in my hometown. And uh, I was, um, I got, I got into it at a really, really good time because the music section had just opened up on Twitch, like legit a week before I started streaming. So it was like right place, right time. Thank goodness. And it just kind of went very, very well uh, for a little while. Um, not including the first stream that didn't work, but every, every other stream, like more people were coming in, they were just having a good time. And then I remember there was a day that I got raided by, uh, I don't know if you guys know about him. MYM Al Capone is his name. He raided me with, I think, 15,000 people. And about two, three years ago on Twitch, that's a lot of people. Like, you know, we got big names like Ninja and stuff like that pulling crazy numbers now. But, like, that was a lot of people. I doubled my follower count in, uh, in three hours, and I was partnered the next week. That was wow. two months in. Um, and it just happened to be the right thing, right place, right time. And uh, one of the right people saw me. Um, it's very strange. They all wanted me to play like, uh, like Spanish songs because he's, he's a, uh, he, he's, he's, <laughs> I had no idea what those people were saying, but I, I learned later that those songs were very, very vulgar. And <laughs> we, uh, we were a family friendly channel, channel at the time. We still are. And uh, everybody was doing hashtag respect in the chat. And I'm like, I know what you guys are doing, but I love y'all anyways, you know, like it was just, they were all trolling me, but it was the, it was the most fun I think I've had on this, uh, I've ever had on a stream was that night. But it just, um, I just ended, I ended up uh, quitting my job about a year in. I didn't just get partnered and quit or, uh, or anything like that because um, I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm a risk taker at all. I'm, I'm <laughs> very, very stubborn and hard headed whenever it comes down to stuff like that. But I wanted to make sure that things were going in a, in a right direction. And then, after that, I just kept going forward. Um, I've been ups and downs, and it's just been good ever since, really. And that's kind of what you're seeing more and more nowadays is um, you have people who were, you know, right place, right time, and you don't get there unless you're streaming and you're actually, you know, in the right place at a time because you can't get the right time unless you're there. You have to do it. Yeah, and you yeah. literally have to do it. But what you're seeing more and more nowadays is you got people who are dipping their toes in, um, and they're doing it because they enjoy streaming. And so they get their affiliate status and everybody's really excited about their affiliate status and then it kind of ebbs off and you start to really build your channel. Um, and so you're not gonna quit your job today having no followers and start a channel tomorrow and be, yeah, you can, I don't recommend do it. it. Um, <laughs> you're not gonna do that, That that's just would be silly, um, but you can build this over time by grinding it out. And so when you're trying to um, kind of grind it out, what are, what are some of the things you'd wish you'd known when you started? Like, not necessarily I, like, I wish, I really wish I'd known OBS existed. Like, I, I, I got to jump out and get like a couple of marbles that are rattling around out before they drive me insane. Yeah. Um, so based on the other stuff, it took me eight years to reach a place where I made enough money to support myself in a year, which was just this last year. And I started in 2010. Ooh. Um, yeah, so I mean, there are guys like Jared who come up and have like musical skill, and like I, yeah, I just I tell dick jokes and I play the Binding of Isaac <laughs> really, really hard. To, to preface so, that though, to preface that, I was playing ten years before I started streaming though. Right. So right, I put like, in the well, time way before. You didn't wake up and turn on OBS and go, oh shit, I'm also good at the drums, and then. Uh, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just trying to preface. I didn't well, just jump just on peanut it. butter and jelly today. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. And, but like. <laughs> but, like like when I like I started in 2010 I watched like I was in a weird spot where I watched a lot of people around me legitimately like I had people who took off around me and ended up being flown in private planes to Google and YouTube uh, one of my channels was one of the first channels that died to Nova posted YouTube content too and now he plays with Tim um, and it took me just forever to find the footing necessary to step out on my own and in that that whole time, like I think everybody hears, you only ever hear from success stories who get up here and tell you, man, I took a leap of faith. Yeah. And I feel like that puts false thoughts into people's heads that all you gotta do is just uh, mortgage everything and leap of faith and that'll, that'll get it for you. But you don't, I mean like, it's not gonna happen for everybody. And so I'm, I'm super interested to get to the Q and A part because I don't know where all your stories are. And I don't like, for, for 101, is it, do I turn on, how do I turn on OBS versus like, how do I build a community? versus how do I build my brand for merchandise? Like, I, I'll be interested to hear where everybody's 101 is, but like the thing that always gets me, cause I'm in like a Facebook group that has 40,000 people. 
and I, I don't really contribute except to answer questions where I feel strongly, but I see questions all the way from, man, I've been streaming for like six days and I'm not ninja yet and I'm really upset. <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, tell me about it, kid. Like, please. <laughs> but then you get other people that come in and it's like, um, the, the, the only thing that I could echo is, is the, the, the intention for why you're doing it really needs to be pure. Uh, I did th this for a long time as a satisfaction to a creative itch that I had. And I had to wait tables and tend bar to pay the bills. And that was where I got it out because I wasn't being able to act. Um, and then it, weird, it weirdly morphed where all of a sudden, th then there was money in content creation because there wasn't for a long time. Yeah, yeah like I, I remember hearing a story like, oh, CNANners got enough money to buy a car. It's like, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody's making, you know, Volkswagen money making YouTube content. And I was, just, I was blown away. <laughs> I had no idea. Um, I, like I remember machinima videos where people were letting letting it leak that it was like I bought a boss five thousand dollar PC with my YouTube money. It's like no, you didn't. Um, and so like it, it's it's morphed and like it did this like YouTube did this when Minecraft got big and everybody and their mother showed up in the comment sections of YouTube videos and was like I've got a Minecraft channel and. I can't tell you how many channels I clicked over to. I was like, all right, guy who, you know, snipes about his channel in the comment section. Let's go see your stuff. And there's no videos. Yeah. It's just like, you know, like some really crappily made MS Paint banner. And it was like, videos coming soon. And now it's Fortnite and Ninja. And everybody's got this idea that like, oh, yeah, man, that's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to become an overnight success like Ninja. And it's like, yeah, Ninja cut his honeymoon short eight years ago because of a Halo tournament he had to get back to. Yeah. Like that guy's been grinding his ass off for a decade. And so, yeah. So, I mean, it's just like, yeah, I, I, at, the, at the threat of being old man yells at Cloud. <laughs> uh, like, I get heated about that. Like it's cool to hate on Tyler now. And I'm just like, eh, screw you, man. That guy works his ass off. Um, but like, it, I don't know. It's, it's important that the intention has to be pure because I, I, for one, have never, it's cool. It's cool to get a little bit of money doing this now. Um, but I, for one, never did this because there was, there, was no, there was not money to start with. We were just doing this because we wanted to create content and because the community was cool and we could meet awesome people and go to cons. And we sank way more money than we were making to fly to cons and to stay in hotels, ate to a bed, uh, just stacked on top of each other. We I, still do. I, I molested Dead Pine in Pack South because you I thought he was did. my wife. <laughs> yes. yes um, for the record, folks, I was we there. were so close to each other. We still stack at eight. Yeah, but we no, do we it because do it. we want to. Yeah. <laughs> now it's because we can. It's yeah. not because we have to. It's but like, optional. I don't know. It, the, the the whole any anyway, the 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 Minecraft thing. Yeah, the Minecraft thing with YouTube and now Fortnite with Twitch is you get a lot of people with stars in their eyes. And they, they show up here. It gets irritating to see people show up because I think they can turn a buck. And what it's a I, shitty reason to get in. Yeah, I think, I think it, it's important to be realistic. Yeah. What I wish I had known when I started was I wish I, a couple of practical things I wish I would have thought about. I wish I would have thought about, uh, I was just doing it for the same reasons you were. I was just really into it. So I didn't think about this stuff. I didn't think about social branding. I didn't think that the name that I chose on Twitch wasn't available on Instagram, mm -hmm. was too long for Twitter. Didn't, I didn't think about social media and I didn't think about trying to have universal branding or anything like that. I just made the name and then it was like after the fact, I had to kind of figure out how to, how to make that work. Um, another thing that I, I wish that I would have known is that Twitch is a really small world. And even though you might only have like 10 people watching or you know something like that, you don't know who those 10 people are. So it might feel really anonymous and really safe for you to say pretty crappy things or do stupid stuff. And I did, you know, and I, I made mistakes and I don't think I familiarized myself with the platform and the content creators on it as well as I should have. So going back, I wish I would have familiarized myself a little bit better, gotten to know the, the big players in the creative and music sections before I started so that when a popular streamer who was doing creative followed me. You know, I wish I would have known what alerts were. I didn't have them on. So what, what do you think she thought when she followed me and I never acknowledged it? Well, she unfollowed me shortly thereafter. You know what I mean? I wish I would have known how important it is to try to acknowledge that. I wish I would have known about the tools, known about the platform, 
And I, I guess I, I wish I would have known that don't do, don't do or say something thinking you're safe because you have 10 viewers thinking nobody's going to see um, or open up about information that, especially with clipping now, saying certain, yeah. you know, there weren't, there wasn't clipping when I started, but things happened that got clipped and put on odd shot. And that was back when odd shot was the thing. I couldn't take them down. So, you know, definitely, I feel like definitely be genuine and definitely be real, but it's also important to sort of have a filter and don't just think, oh, I only have five viewers and I'm on this platform and it's not my real name. So I'm going to say whatever. If you're taking it seriously and one day you want to be able to be proud of what you've done, sometimes there's going to be those mistakes and if you can think about that now and present yourself as if there's a thousand people watching content you'd be proud of while still maintaining, um, you know, sense of being genuine and real with people, I think that that is a good balance to have. That's a great point. Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, one thing that I wish that I knew whenever I first started was um, to do, uh, to have done a little bit more research at, uh, about the tools at my disposal. Um, I mean, Discord, I didn't know about, I didn't know what Discord was when it first came out. Um, I actually had people who helped me set one up. My Discord channel is not even my Discord channel. It's my mods Discord channel that we rebranded because of the fact I didn't know how to do it. Um, <laughs> I'm, as an IT guy, I'm exceedingly illiterate whenever it comes to technology. I don't know why. But uh, just learning about a lot of the tools that are actually out there and that are free for you to use for your stream really really important to look into um and uh like to take advice from others as well because there are others who have done what you've done possibly have done it better or worse and they have their own take on it so don't be afraid to ask for uh advice would be my other uh, point of advice i mean uh i i wish in 2016 i knew that I should have been way better at Fortnite. That would help. <laughs> <laughs> you were pretty good at Fortnite. Yeah, but I wasn't good enough. Uh, Gary Taffy enough. It's not I tried. Uh, I tried to Gary Taffy. Um, I feel like this turned into a weight thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. What a, I, I wish I knew. Uh, I, I wish I wasn't as stubborn, like I said earlier. Uh, I wish I didn't. Uh, Stephanie said earlier, I believe, about uh, putting yourself on an island, you know? Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, unless uh, unless you're so confident in your ability to carry your no, I'm not even gonna say that. Just don't put yourself on an island. It's uh, it's there's no point, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and another thing, the internet doesn't forget anything. So even with the out, huh? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Someone put the word epitome in chat, and I epitome? I said epitome. Oh my god. I thought that was a word. I thought they were two separate words. Also, and now, three years later, life. the internet doesn't forget. Um, no, it, it is more about just being genuine and realizing that you're never going to pull a fast one on the internet. Um, yeah. You will not get past the hive mind of the internet. They will figure you out if you're trying some stupid shit. If you're trying to just like get in there and make a quick buck or scam somebody um you know it's never gonna work out i i i'm not accusing anybody i'm sure you're all lovely people you have fantastic taste in panels yes um, you do so i'm sure it's no one here but you know just uh don't let don't let it go to your head that you can get away with something you know um and i wish that i knew epitome was a word that's <laughs> <laughs> well, oh one more thing and this is very technical i wish that i knew that obs had a start stream confirmation button that's so that thing? if you ask yes so that <laughs> let's just say maybe you're in your bra in your office <gasps> and you don't ask yeah maybe maybe it, you would have a little fail safe so oh, that no. if that happened there would be a confirmation thing. Are you sure you want to start a stream? Because otherwise, somehow that button just can come on sometimes. I had no idea. I thought that, that was a thing. That. Yeah. Has, yeah. Ha thank goodness Oddshot took it down before anything happened. But this has happened to a friend of mine too. And uh, so I always tell people, this is embarrassing. Oh my gosh, why did I tell everybody this? But there is a start stream confirmation button in OBS. <laughs> Use it. Key takeaways. Use it. Even because you it's it's embarrassing enough to just hit live and be like 
<laughs> Imagine them hearing everything you're listening to and seeing you just be deadpan in front of your computer. It's it's a thing. Why would you have OBS open? Don't I, I was gonna stream. It's a long story. Just it's the little things like that. It yeah. is. You know what I mean? Like that's a thing. Use I caught it. crap because I ate toast into the microphone for like five minutes. Where it was just me. <laughs> it like, was playing music and making smacking noises while I ate toast, waiting because I forgot to mute. They were like, was... oh, sexy ASMR stream. Let's go. <laughs> Why is it not on by default? You were ahead of your time. My lip smacking streams are available through Patreon now. So. <laughs> Worked out. Uh, uh, as far as like, the, really quickly, the, the, just I'll throw this out and I'll shut up. Um, You're fine. You got like the, 22 the, minutes. The thing that I wish that I had realized early on was the value of consistency. And that is, that's across the board. Like people think that's like, oh, that just means you always start stream at eight and always finish at noon. It's the value of consistency across the quality of your content. I used to take my bad days out on chat. I used to take my bad days out on stream and you can't do that. Like you, you can, but you have to package it in such a way that it seems like entertainment because ultimately <laughs> that's what it is. I mean, you've got like now the got va me. value of the cons consistency of your visual brand. And like, even if you're doing it for fun or as a hobby, just like the, you know, the, the things that are the, your, your panels, your offline screen, your social media branding, like, do as much as you feel like you want to be invested in it, but it, it, like consistency of the voice across that, consistency of the quality of my stream, consistency of like, I used to show up and be like, yeah, I'm in a bad mood and you guys are going to sit and suffer through me being in a bad mood. And it's like, wow, that sounds awesome. Thanks. That's, that's escapism entertainment at its finest. Thanks, big guy. Um, and then just kind of learning that, you know, I, like I had a friend, I have a friend named Nate who's one of the guys who taught me into coming back. And uh, and Nate gave me two things, and one was, and it's like crazy to point it out, but again, it's somebody who has made a fortune off of being uh, consistent. And it was like Katy Perry, like a documentary for Katy Perry, where she had Russell Brand leave her minutes before a show happened over the phone, and she's like sob, ugly crying her face off, and then they go, it's it's five minutes to curtain, and she goes. <sighs> And gets up and goes and does a show for a hundred thousand people, and then comes back down and falls apart again. But nobody in the audience has any clue. And so you can be as real and honest and genuine as you want, but people are still showing up to either be involved in something, but not like they don't want to be involved. Like, oh, I'm gonna be mired down in this guy's crap for a half an hour. Um, like, so consistency of quality of content. I frankly forced myself to get better at the game than I was. I was content that people were like, oh, they're happy to watch me fumble around for six hours. I was like, crap, I actually, I'm like, if I get better, people will give a damn more. <laughs> so I like forced mm -hmm. myself to get better at the games that I was at. And uh, and then, yeah, time slot, like just showing up to work. I told Nate one day, I, I called him. I was like, I don't want to stream today. And I have a lot of friends that like when they don't want to stream, they don't stream. And he's like, I don't give a shit, go to work. Yeah. Like that's your job, right? And I was like, well, yeah, but I mean, I'm not making like full time money yet. And he's like, and you won't if you don't go to work. Go to work, and that that part was like it, it was profound because any job where somebody was handing me a check, I would be mortified if I was a couple minutes late. Like, uh, uh, it, it drives me insane to be late to anything. But with the stream, I was like, I don't feel it today. And he's like, I don't give a damn what you feel. Go to work. Um, <laughs> so just overall, just across the board consistency. I wish I had focused on early on and to that point you you were always one of the people that champions you know choosing your time slot carefully yeah uh i picked a vacuum where the titans weren't um lethal frag cobalt streak northern lion um all these guys stream lars fest grizzy they all stream in the evening and afternoon and i didn't want to fight that so i picked a void i'm I, i'm if i'm a morning person it's because i'm in the wrong time zone and like I might be a morning person, but my morning is like somewhere in Europe where it would be where I'd, I'd sleep till noon in the East Coast because I hate waking up in the morning and my stream starts at 8 a.m. So if I want to go to the gym, I got to get up at five and then my stream goes until like eight until like four, maybe. Uh, but I do that because that's where the other guys aren't the nighttime streamers. I get great hosts from guys like Brain and Richard Hammer. Um, yeah, I woke up at 4 a.m. Uh, I streamed for about six months, tried to stream at night. Uh, numbers were okay but there's a lot of trolls too a lot of north american trolls uh it was pretty bad <laughs> and, it, and it, i honestly troll. didn't get the best viewership and honestly it wasn't good for my sleep i need to be i need to make sure i sleep uh so i'd wake up early 
so that I could get online early and first stream back like very quickly within a month. My viewership was very high. It was all the Europeans, yep. all the Australians, yep. all of those folks that don't get people on at that time all the time. Um, and they got me very, very quickly partnered. And I, ha I still have a very huge international audience, more so than U.S. based. And then I expanded out and now I do, you know, my Monday morning stream and then I do a Saturday night stream. And then in between, I'll have a, you know, maybe Wednesday morning or maybe Thursday night, I'll rotate it. But, you know, it's a reasonable schedule that I'm OK with. And it definitely going for that a.m. time slot was imperative to getting there and getting to know people. And now I stream a little later in the morning, but they still come. They're still at work that time. They're, they still show up. So definitely consider consider that, you know. Consistency is important, but balance in your life is even more important than consistency. Um, I've been streaming at 4.30, four days a week for three and a half years now. And I made that decision due to the fact that I had to work in the mornings and I had other, thing, other things to do. So that's the type of thing you have to do. You have to make your stream kind of work for you instead of you working for it, if that makes sense. Um, Super important to give yourself time to relax, to just chill, to have fun playing video games off stream, hang out with your family, hang out with friends. Uh, if you're going to be streaming five days a week, eight hours a day, you need to figure out a way to make that sustainable because it's very hard to make it not sustainable. You know what I'm saying? There's so much burnout, depression, and just terrible things that people always are talking about on Twitter because streaming is hard. And yes, it is like, it's just like another job. You are entertaining people for hours at a time. You're talking, you are using your mind, you are doing multiple things. You are multitasking. It's stressful. Um, I've been, I've been going to a physical therapy for my back for a couple of months now because drumming is hard. I, you know, and, and that's why like you got to make sure that what you're doing is sustainable. 100% consistency is important. Balance is even more important. Yeah, so we have about 15 minutes left. So I want to toss it up for any questions because Taffy has a good point. What do you guys want to know from us? Uh, we're up here to be a resource to you. So um, what we're going to do is essentially if you've got a question, you're going to come up right here to the middle and ask it, um, kind of line up, and then we'll repeat it for the benefit of the recording, and then we'll answer it. So... Go ahead. Have what? fun. Don't be shy. I hope there's questions. Lord yeah, knows we're not. <laughs> we could blather forever, but we, we won't answer what you want to know. Go for it, buddy. What's your question? So the question is, what motivates you to get up and stream every day? And is variety of streaming a good thing to hop into right now? Variety is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. um, honestly, it's it's so much harder because I feel like variety. Uh, how do I? It's it's a snowball effect of having a community already, bringing them into a new directory. You know, scooping up new people in that directory. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. I remember seeing uh, lyric as a huge like. Uh, like success story for something like that where he was like I have these people let's let's go everywhere um, and I my, my roots were originally in League of Legends that's where I started my content uh, and I was there for a while and uh, I would do other things you know I'd bring people after I had like my 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 viewers there i'd bring them into a new place and you know see how they would t take it you know to test different waters um, and yeah, I've been doing it for five plus years uh, and only maybe a year ago did I decide like to really try to make a big push into variety. Uh, I feel like starting out, it's way easier to find a game that you like, find a game that the directory, because you do have to play the Twitch game, you know, it's just what it is. You know, you could be like, I love uh, Persona 2. I'm going to be there. And, you know, how many people are in that directory? You know, how are you going to be found? Um, so finding a, finding a place to kind of root in uh, first and then kind of expand from there uh, is, is definitely an easier step, at least right now. I mean, you could always tackle the newest, hottest directories, you know, and just see what happens. Um, but 
yeah, variety is rough. And it was terrifying for me to do. Like when I finally decided to commit to that, it was it was scary. It was it was a it was a big step. And I already had like fifty thousand plus people following the cast already, and I was still terrified, you know? So it's hard to recommend it right now. But especially in your early stages, find games that you want to play and just kind of assess it, you know? Because that's the motivation, right? To have fun and to enjoy yourself and to bring people in on that experience. I'm sorry, I made that sound really Which sad. Which is what I, I that's, <laughs> no, it's, you, you've got to have fun. I'm motivated by fun. It feels good. I'm doing things I like. And I also feel that I'm of service to people because I know that I'm entertaining them and because I know that they're enjoying themselves. I'm on in the background while they're working or, or whatever. So I'm motivated by fun and by the spirit of, of being of service to other people too. I guess those are my main motivations. Cool. Next question. Remember, no context. Just give us a question. Yeah, yeah. I I bump up against that. Like Br Brizzy's been bold enough to go off and go into variety. I stick with I have four thousand. I have over four thousand hours in the Binding of Isaac. It's a lot. It's it's a great game. It's a great game. <laughs> Part of the reason that I play that game is because so. There was a, Twitch, Twitch, a partner Twitch streamer that I loved that was, he was Madonna's touring violinist who cre created a Twitch stream where he would uh, take uh, requests from the audience and then he would just rip off of like YouTube videos. Now, technically you're not supposed to do that, but he did that and we would ask him, we'd say, wow, holy crap, you are an amazing violinist. And uh, what, what, it blows my mind that you're so good at the violin. How do you do that and chat and cut up and all that kind of stuff? And the thing was is that he was doing something he committed to muscle memory and was just grateful for, to have someone to talk to. Otherwise, he would be bored. And for me, it's the fact that I play Isaac, and I'm sure, I'm sure to a point you with, you with drumming is like, it's something you've done enough that it's committed to muscle memory so you can have big conversations. I have other games that I play. Like if I play a BR, I go almost stone silent because I'm so concentrated on, like I mouth breathe so hard. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I go back and watch like video of that. And I'm like, that's not, that's, oh, okay. Well back to Isaac we go. And I go back to Isaac and I play it because I have the ability like, yeah, sure. I would love, uh, I would love to just grab Red Dead and be like, well, I'll see everybody on the other side of the old West. And, but I, I play the game that allows me to have those conversations with people and whether it's, yeah, just big conversations can happen when I can put my mind into autopilot and play the game that I got an ass load of hours in. So I think a quick thing to throw in is it's it's really kind of game by game. Like different games give you better opportunity to interact and really shine. Yeah. Um, like I've been, I'm 85 hours into a Persona Persona 5 uh, playthrough right now, and the way that it works, the way that in the middle of com like in the middle of dialogue, you can just like hit a button and pause it and give your take on what they just said and things yeah, like I'll that. St I'll stop if I have to to get a conversation out where I like, this de demands more attention than I can give it. Let me just pause. Yeah, certain yeah. games just give you that option. Like uh, Darkest Dungeon, it's like a turn-based game. You know, you can you can just assess what's going on in the game and just talk. You know, you don't have to make progress. It's a lot harder to do things like that in a Battle Royale game. So I feel like you need to figure out what kind of conversations or what kind of tone you want to set, like how much you want to add to it. Because think about all of the most popular Battle Royale streams. 95% of them get the views they get because they're insanely good. So mm -hmm. they don't need to add much to what they're doing. Um, where other games, like just like I said, like Darkest Dungeon, things like that, give you more opportunity to be entertaining yourself. Also, not everybody wants boisterous. Yeah. If that's not you... Be you. Somebody you might that. want calm. You know what I mean? Somebody might want that. You don't have to try to get that shock value. That works for some people. That might not work for you. Play to your strengths. Yeah. Like, whenever it comes down to it, look at Lethal Frag. He's made a living having people sleep to his streams because yeah. he doesn't yell or do anything like that. It's actually amazing. But 
play to your strengths. Great. Like yeah. if um if you uh if you have to be quiet, do that. If you can't like scream and yell and throw drumsticks around like like I do for some reason, uh just don't do that. It'll just be, be sustainable yourself. that yes. way. Be yourself. To be yourself. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you very much. And for we want to make sure we get to everyone's questions. So lightning yeah. round. We're gonna lightning round, yes. take it one person at a time. Oh yeah. Go for it. Oh, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. I mean, we just, uh, I mean, personally, I, I jumped into it because of the fact that I saw that it was growing and that I, I, mean, I took a risk, you know, like it's just like in any business, it's all about risk assessment. Mm -hmm. So at that time, my, my stream started doing better than my regular business. So I was like, you know what? Let's put all of my, uh, let's put all of my time into that. It took a year and a half, but I was able to make that jump because I was confident that I was making the same amount, if not a little bit more than what I was already making. So it's like, it's, it's kind of hard to make that jump. It's scary, but you can do it if you would like to. It becomes business analytics at that point. Yeah. 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 I was doing well and I was enjoying myself. Yep. Yeah. And I knew that I wouldn't get sick of what I was doing and I was doing well and enjoying myself. That's how I knew it'd be okay. Excellent answers. Go for it. Oh my God, that's the golden question, man. So I'm going to repeat that question. So what uh, the question is, what kind of integrate, uh, what kind of boost has have integrations like sub gifting, Twitch Prime, etc. You know, carpet bombing, sub gifting, that kind of thing. I'm making three what? times as much this year as I did last year on month on to month average. <laughs> it is nutty. It's like, crazy. The it, answer it, is good. Yes. But it varies. You can't depend on it as much yeah, as you yeah, could yeah. predict it before. You can no longer keep a finger on the pulse of your channel by saying, I have this many subs. Because it could now go up it's exactly, a yeah. batshit yeah. crazy rocket ride. But it's good. Awesome meme guy says five minutes left. Cool. Subba. Uh -huh. So like Twitter or like YouTube or Instagram or uh, for me, the biggest boosts have been for me, the biggest boosts weirdly have been cons. Like mm -hmm. I go to cons and I meet other content creators and I go to like hobnobby events. But like for the most part, genuine, like the, the it's, it's like you said earlier, the circle, the circle is so small, like the circle is small. And the, you go like I go to these things and meet other people, we end up following each other on Twitter conversations happen and audiences get commingled. So most of my growth has been commingling audiences where I've just, I've found other like-minded individuals. It's not a, I'm going to flex on you and take your stuff, but it's like, <laughs> like Brizzy, I, I, I was in his chat for all, probably a year before we ever played together because I just genuinely enjoyed t like watching his content as a viewer. Mm -hmm. um, but like you, you start to find your groups and cross pollinate. That, that's the best way to do it because you get actually invested people as opposed to like, follow for follow man we're gonna do it together whatever so that for me that's been the most organic way it's been to find other communities and meaningfully meaningfully integrate yourself into them and and that's you just make make more friends maybe and it's obvious but make sure people know from your twitch channel yeah put exactly. in a chat command and bot put in your info panels make for sure they know for example i'm gonna say all of our twitter handles at the end of this so <laughs> you can all follow us on twitter um but also to the fact I want to say don't agonize over your tweets. I personally do that and it's it's a downward spiral. So try not to do that. Yeah, yeah. but I'm a lawyer, so good point. So All right, next question. All right, cool. What's up? That's a long So I'm, I'm going to steal both of these. So the first question is, um, uh, what was the first question? Right, music. Nice job. That's right. So what happens when you uh, play copyrighted music on your stream? You get screwed. Don't do that. Um, use, a, use a platform like Pretzel or Monster Cat. Uh, Pretzel has more songs, though, and it's $5. Full, dis uh, full disclosure. Yeah, full disclosure. I represent them, and he founded them. So... Um, <laughs> 
transparency meme. Uh, so yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll have DMCA's and lose your channel. Um, and in terms of what happens when a platform offers a salary, um, that's actually kind of happening already in certain cases. So for example, Facebook Gaming, when they launched, they did a big push and they started offering salaries to a lot of the biggest people in the industry. And they offered a ton of money. We're talking like five mm -hmm. figures a month um, to come over and stream. And so they were offering salaries. And I think it changes the game a little bit, but I think it will de decrease viewership. One of the ways they incentivized it was they made you um, continue to build up your subs because at a certain point that salary runs out. Now, if the salary doesn't run out, then I have no idea what happens because that's a terrifying road to go down. So, yes. So uh, that question was, how do you get your Twitch channel off the ground when you're on the move a lot and you're at ground zero? It can be hard to be consistent while you're moving around and doing different things. But what you want to do is you want to find a uh, schedule that works for you for one thing, uh, something that's sustainable once again. And um, also Twitch has so many new little things that uh, allows you to stream not just gaming but you can you know you can stream your experiences while you're out and about or doing different things or going on vacations or doing like uh you're traveling and whatnot uh unlimited irls are a really good tool for that because it gives you a, un, uh, unlimited internet uh on the go so you can stream on the go as well it's just uh, another way of looking at it yeah and live you also helps with that as well yeah. we have literally one yeah. minute so next two questions let's get you in How would you go about streaming a saturated game? Be amazing at it. Be the Get, best. And make I mean, friends. Like, that, that sounds like such a smart ass answer, but I, I just, it, my advice is just like either be the best in the world at it or or it's, find it's, a different place to I live. I mean, the, you know, you kind of said it yourself, it's saturated I, market. Yeah, it's, I, it's just harder, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it's, yeah. That's it's, If you're going yeah. League of Legends, Magic the Gathering, Fortnite, PUBG, CSGO, like any of those, it's like just it's hard. be world class and a good entertainer. Have yeah. that lightning in a bottle mix of those two things and you'll be just fine. But yeah, to, to answer your question and uh, our previous question uh, before, just to add on to that one a little bit, um, any friends and family, like yeah. be, ha the difference between having one viewer and five get off the bottom is, is no massive. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that, you do it. that puts you way up on the directory, like comparatively. Moms, yeah. dads, um, uncles, yeah. cousins, friends, you know, Make your dog a Twitch bus. account and, you know, like, <laughs> No, uh, you Hydration know, bot. No. <laughs> no, like it's just a big difference. Kidding. And, you know, just ask friends and family and yeah, it, cool. it could help a lot. Uh, don't be afraid to tell people that you stream. Like, don't be afraid to do it. Just don't, don't, be don't dirt, annihilate them with it. Like, yeah. yo, yeah. follow me, follow me, follow me, follow. You know, don't do that. There's no reason yeah. to do that. Cool. Just be a part of different communities and have a good time with it. Yeah. Awesome. And last question. Mm -hmm. So the question is, when you start streaming, how do you deal with working and also getting your necessary hours for streaming? Jared kind of, well, sorry, Jared kind of had a good point when he said, make the stream work for you. Don't really work for the stream. Like, I think that that fit in yeah. really well to that. Like, um, in your off time, uh, like, let's say you're working from nine to five, make a couple hours at the most uh, and like, just press that start streaming button. Like, stream for like one to two hours at a time. You don't have to do the eight hour stream in order to make it. My streams have never been over four hours long. I've always done the what I like to call episodic streaming, where it's like they can enjoy the entire thing and they get the full experience. It's kind of like a movie, like three hours. It's like, OK, I got through this whole thing yeah. and it's awesome that way instead of them having to be there the entire time. Well, when's going to something's going to happen, you know, so just uh, make it work around your schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my wife, my wife streams three hours a day, three days a week. And that's just that's what she can do. And she has no illusions of like being flown in private jets to cons <laughs> like she just she yes. likes playing video games for strangers and so she does that for about 15 or 20 people that's what she does that's yeah. what my wife does and as well she ad that's, her, that's her time that's her time and she adores it and she just makes it she makes that time fit for her she doesn't try to do six days a week it's just uh and she's building a community with people that I, like i get there and i've never met them and it's like oh you're building your own twitch thing that's really really cool and it just it fits around what she does and, and terrifying at the same time yeah. have so, fun with it it's okay to have start slow it. one or two days a week is fine you don't have yeah. to go full yeah. seven yeah. days a week you can build it over a long time yeah. you have a piece at a time and that's both the metaphysical and around the, actual, the same like, time at the can always be good too yeah. because then people know oh, who's on this time 
Cool. They kind of get used to that. So you can follow us, and that's the end of the panel. You can follow us on our various social media platforms. Going to go to one at a time. Jared, the Apid drummer, everywhere. Uh, Labrizzi nice. on Twitch, Labrizzi TV on Twitter, because Labrizzi, some dude who uh, hasn't tweeted in five years. And Yo, I, I can help you with that. Nice. I'm Stephanie on Twitch. I'm dead, D E D, Stephanie elsewhere. Uh, McLaffy Taffy, uh, until Nestle sues me, and <laughs> then I'll be something else. But uh, McLaffy Taffy across most everything that matters. And I am my lawyer friend on everything except for Instagram, where I'm my dot lawyer friend. There's <laughs> thank you guys yeah. so much for coming. Anyways, thank you guys so much for coming. Thank we'll be available for questions.